Thank you. Hi, Jasmine. Um, my question is, I am a full-time stylist who is looking to become an educator. How do I, on my single Instagram, I have a reach question. Salt? How much of your current income, percentage-wise, I don't need numbers, how much of your current income is a derivative of education, and how much of your current income is a derivative of your chair? Zero from education, because I don't start till March. How much in the future do you want it to be? 50% then in the future, you will start posting. You're slowly going to work up to every other post will be education-driven. And the beauty about sharing the education, because when somebody says, balayage, stand up, 2020, don't know what that means. If you give a tutorial for somebody who's in the industry, me as a prospective consumer can look through the tutorial and not understand it entirely, but have an appreciation. I speak first and foremost as a practitioner. When I was a photographer, I was creating tutorials for other photographers. But what I found out was that clients were coming to me and be like, so you know that thing that you said when like lights behind them? And I was like, Yes. So doing it right is different than just using it to take up space. So right now, I'm guessing all of your social content is to get people in the chair. If right. you want to have break up your income, then you're going to be moving towards that slowly, but it's not going to happen overnight. I would suggest currently, if you're posting like six days a week right now on Instagram, one of those for the next four weeks is going to turn into education. And then the next four weeks, two of those are going to turn into education. And the next three months, three of those are going to turn into education. So you're slowly moving the tides so nobody's like, whoa, what just happened right here? Okay. Um, I have a question about, I am really um, anal thanks to Brit and just branding and what my social media or Instagram feed looks like when yes. someone comes to it. Yes. Um, so I really want to be myself. And so like if I were to take pictures here. Okay, am I going to guess? Here's the thing, y'all. I've been around the block. If you're wondering, do I prioritize a pretty aesthetic feed or me showing up personally on Instagram? Yeah. You see? Yeah. I'm like a mind reader. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was a time, and I reserve the right, I still stand by that. In 2016, you would hear me say, Instagram is like a magazine. Instagram is like a museum. You curate it so people instantaneously know who you are. And that worked then. Game changed. Now mm -hmm. people smell the funk. Okay. People want, I don't say people want ugly, they want real, right? So if you're taking a photo and it's maybe not the best light and it looks a little bit like it's off the grid, there was a time where I'd be like, oh, put another photo on top of it and swipe, right? Now I'm like, show you, show your, show your, show your studio. With a filter? Sure. And Lightroom. Lightroom app is free. You do yeah. not need to be a photographer, but what you can take an iPhone photo and go into Lightroom, and you guys, I promise you, eight minutes, go to YouTube, watch any Lightroom app tutorial, and you will change your tungsten lighting, the orange lighting in your studio, and you push a little thing on Lightroom, and it makes it look prettier. You bring up exposure. You take out the shadows. Y'all, show up. Maybe I'll just do a tutorial on the inside yeah. of drivers. You guys did? The answer, the answer becomes prioritize engagement. That's what the algorithm wants. Thank you. Okay, my, my question is a variation of the other ones. I'm trying to attract a new tribe, new stylists, right? Yes. So, but I still have to attract clients using Instagram. So how do I flip that to say, it's me, I'm here, come work for me, and oh, we still need to do your beautiful balayage. <laughs> oh, I mean, here's the thing. What, what, I want you, so I showed you an example of what it felt like as a consumer to get into your chair. You I have people it. who are currently in your studio and you want more people coming in, yeah. like repurpose their posts and say three unique, amazing, thoughtful things about them. Yeah. Highlight others. People are so worried that they're going to take their new versioning business and turn it over to somebody who doesn't care about them and is going to take them for all their worth. You highlight others and you're building up your social and they're like, wow, I like her. Be the boss you wish you had and show it on Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, so how much should I have that's personal when I don't want like a ton of new clients, but I also need to be like, hey, I'm a stylist. I'm here. Um, to each their own. And uh, you have to think about your end user. Like I, I don't want to share too much about like my personal examples, but I think my stylist would be okay with it. She has a business Instagram account and a personal Instagram account, and I follow her personal. Like, I'm happy that she's out working, but like, I really care about her kids. So if you have the luxury of not trying to put a bunch of people in your chair, share mm -hmm. personal stuff. Like, that is what drives engagement. 
You will not hear me say posture. You will not have me say have a perfect feed. You will not have me say become an influencer. You'll never hear that from me. That's good. That's not what I preach. It's build a clientele of people who like you and then they follow you and then they support you. You are in a glorious position. Share who you are. Share what you do. Mm. Salon owner whose target, personal target market is not on Facebook, but my team's target market is on Facebook. Or sorry, I'm sorry, Instagram. I'm focused on Facebook because that's where my target market lives. But my team's target market is on Instagram. So I struggle as an owner to show up as I'm the one doing it, to show up on Instagram with that target market in mind, with that, speaking to that audience who is not, like, not my age group, not my audience, and trying it. to, yeah. 20% of people on Instagram create 80% of the content. That means that by and large, accounts on Instagram are repurposing content from content creators. You, ladies and gentlemen, are, con ladies and gentlemen? Yep. Yes, yes, showing up, yes. Are the content creators. You are a photographer with shears. Do you get that? Okay, you create the content that other people are gonna be incentivized to share. In this particular situation, as a salon owner, you, my friend, are in the glorious position to curate your entire Instagram feed based on the people who are in your studio. You can pull from them and highlight them and talk about the ongoing education. Are you trying to get customers from Instagram for you, or are you just trying to build out your studio's Instagram? Build out, well, build their clients. Exactly. Then all you have to do, Oh, I love this. She had said, my objective is to get them. She needs to get foots through the door. Foots? <laughs> I was homeschooled. You gotta get feet through the door and booty in the seats. All you have to do is take the content that your stylists are doing and take their stories, have them. Okay, so if you wanna grow your audience and you're new or you just want more people in your seats, I want you tagging your salon. I want you hashtagging the salon and if you don't always want to hashtag, you can get your hashtag, get the eyedropper, select a color in it, and hide or camouflage your tag and hashtag so that the salon owner can repurpose it without having the hashtag or the app mentioned there. Ladies and gentlemen, give your salon owners content to pimp your work. So, so good. Well, she says, but good content, and I'm like, skirt. You ain't got no content. So at this point, all <laughs> content's good. And then, because we're naturally competitive people, some of us, a little bit of competition, start sharing more of Jackie's stories. And people are like, you know what? Why are you always sharing hers? I'm feeling really offended. Do you see what Jackie's doing? She's having engagement. She's having slider pulls. She's tagging us. It's styled well. And all of a sudden, you just say, these are why I'm doing it. You want to be repurposed? Look at her. Ooh, Puerto Rican mama came out. <laughs> Thank you. Jasmine, I'm so excited to see you. Uh, okay, so I have a question about Instagram stories. Yes. Because every time I look at other people's uh, Instagram stories, and I do my own, and it's like, oh, it's inspired by that person. And I almost look at all of them and I'm like, they're all the same. How is mine different? Mm. It's the same. How do I stand out? How weird do I get? How, how far is can too I, far? Can I, ask, can I ask you a question? Yes. Were you born here in the United States? No. Where were you born? In Russia. Okay. I Russian. don't know about you, but I heard it and I was so intrigued I couldn't get to your question because I was like, I like the way you speak. Mm. <laughs> so if I had an Instagram story and I said, I'm at Thriver Society Live. Half of this room would be like, I just, this isn't like, and you could say, I am Thriving Society Live. <laughs> and somebody wants to hear it from you. Mm. I've been working so hard not to have that accent, and now you're telling me. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Oh. Whoa. Okay, you made I my don't day. Know. I don't know if, like, wait, okay, I, I think she might be deaf in her left ear. How many of you want her to lose her accent? No. Thank you, thank you. So, but now, this is not a warm, good, feel good. Well, you know, I ain't no Tony Robbins. So let's get into the granular <laughs> stuff, right? Okay, yes. Three M's. Okay. Message. You and I might say the exact same thing, but it's not going to stop you from speaking 
Why? Because you're a messenger and I'm a messenger. And even though we could be saying the same thing, there are people in the room who need to hear it from you and need to hear it from me. And when you don't share your message, you're robbing God and the universe and a customer and your child to see what you have to say. And even if you and I are identical twins saying the same dang thing in the same dang way, the third M is the medium. You might be really good at writing captions and I might be really good at video. Those three M's, queen, are going to be the thing that all day, every day, are going to empower us to show up different. So do not lose your accent. Do not overthink it. There is no new way to show up on stories under the sun. The Egyptians, if they had stories, would be showing up the same way that we are today. Nothing is original. You do you. The three M's will always set you apart.